take a walk uh, down into the ring, right? Let's take a walk into the ring and let's talk about some of your fights. I'm getting chill box. You're getting chills? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, thinking about that, that walk, that man, walk, that way. I see you're, so you're, you're fighting on national television. You're yeah. fighting on pay per view, yeah. or, or you, you know, you're fighting on. There's no television. It doesn't matter when you're walking down that, walking down to the ring. What are you thinking? All these things are coming on you. Okay, okay, you got to do this, got to. And really, what you got to do is just kind of got to let it go. Well, what are you in the habit of doing? I've been training for six or eight weeks, so this is, and, and I can't do any more, getting in shape right. at this point. So. I'm ready, or I'm not ready. Are you afraid when you walk down that, that aisle, headed to uh, the ring? At, at times, the fear tries to jump in there. And you know, how many says, you know how many times it says fear not in the Bible, or something real similar to fear? It says it 365 times. One for each day? Can you believe that? <laughs> yeah, and I like, so I like to think as, as fear, as, not a word, but it's an acronym. It stands for false evidence appearing real. Mm. So, well, no matter what kind of fight you're in, not necessarily a boxing match, but maybe you're with your, with your uh, wife or with your uh, parents or with your friend, there, you have to just be able to, so, so, many, so many people want to get, want to get, want to get mean, mm -hmm. want to get mean. And, and there are a lot of people are watching me, it's like, look at you, you had six, I had 68 fights, 33 pro boxing matches, 35 kickboxing matches, is that mean? Well, it was what the God, God gave me the the, uh, the gifts to be able to fight like that, and uh, I do have uh, issues sometimes. Think about you know me hurting people, and, and I broke my hand a bunch of times. I broke my sternum, broke my ribs. Uh, I had surgery. Hey, you see a scar here? I do. So I fought Oscar De La Hoya. I got I got cut in the first round. Oh man, I hear the opportunity to, to beat this guy. I know what it be. No, I <laughs> I don't, I don't know what would have happened. But anyways, I got cut in the first round. I love that. But that, but that's the competitive nature of, of athletes, right? That's the competitive nature of give me the best. I want to go against the best. I feel that I'm the best. And, and I can beat them, right? I, I can beat them. And so that's a mentality when you're walking down that ring. I, I was reading earlier one of, your, one of your quotes that you always had when you go into the ring that you never thought that you could not win. Right, you always thought in every single fight that you were in that I'm going to win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if, if you think you can win, and it doesn't matter what you're going through, if you think you can win, you're right. But if you think you're going to lose, you're guess right. what? You're right. <laughs> so it's, a, it's all right here. I, I think boxing uh, and most competitive sports are probably 80, 90 percent right here. Yes. Right here. You play football, so you know it's. Yeah. it's it's right when you tell yourself, there's times I'm sure you look back and you go, I said I, I, said I could, and I sure didn't. I know I did. Right. So yeah, it's a, that, 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 that positive frame of thinking that you have to do it. You gotta when, do it. When, when Troy Dorsey is sitting back and he's, he's having his cup of tea or his cup of coffee and he's kind of reminiscing, right? He's sitting around the kids and, and, he, and he's holding, so the aggressive name was Lorenzo. Lorenzo. And he's holding little Lorenzo, right? right. And he's telling yeah. little Lorenzo, Man, your granddad, boy, when he was in his prime, man, he was, what fight sticks out to you? What fight do you go and you say, man, that, that was one of the fights of a lifetime for me, whether it was a win or a loss. Like, what's maybe one of the top two or three fights that you've had in your career that, you know, you sometimes you sit back and you go, ooh, that was a, that was a, you know, and you reminisce that fight right there. What are some of those fights that you've had in your time that you sit back and reminisce? Well, in 1989, I got a chance to fight for the North American Boxing Federation title in boxing. And uh, I ended up, so that the guy got hurt that was going to fight, and I was fighting the number one contender, Harold Rhodes. So I bought him uh, August 8, 1989, and I was a stand-in fighter. So I went to, to Montana, in the Great Falls, Montana. It was on USA, and so it was a great opportunity for me. I fought the number one contender, and I stopped him in the 10th round. So that fight set up. The next fight is with Mar Jorge Marmero Paez, mm -hmm. and uh, he was the fighter of the year in 1989. In all of boxing, he was on the cover of Ring Magazine, uh, fighter of the year, and he was my weight division. So I was gonna, I, I, winning that fight, I got to fight him February 4th in uh, Las Vegas, at the Las Vegas Hilton. 
Las Vegas Hilton was pretty big that time. Now it's like they don't even know what the company <laughs> is. But anyways, I fought him, and it was on national television on Channel Five. Uh, who was the Who was the uh, Ferdy Pacheco? Was the announcer? I know you guys probably don't even know who that is, but it's, it's in 1990 before you were born, right? And I was born in '84, but I was, oh. you know, I was, okay. you know, a little bit, little, little. I was a little young, and I was a little young, then. Okay, so I was fighting for the world, the world title. This was my a goal, a, a huge goal of my life to be able to win, the, be the first person in to win a world title in kickboxing and boxing, and hold them at the same time. So this was my opportunity. So. And like I said, Pius was the fighter of the year in 1989 out of all the fighters that there are. And so I was going against that. And I, uh, he knocked me down the second round, but I was on him. I was, my head was in his chest. I was patting him the hard, as hard as I could. I wasn't much of a puncher. I, I knocked several people out, but I, I was a heavy puncher. But I had him on the ropes and I, was, and I still get fan mail today saying, hey man, you won that fight. So you know whose hand they raise? They raise his hand. But uh, that was that was a that was a uh, a really memorable fight. Even though I lost, like I said, I still get fan fan mail. People say, or I see people on the street. They say, oh, yeah, you won that fight. You won both of those fights. Because I ended up fighting him again. Mm -hmm. So what happened is I fought him in February, and then uh, in April there was another another. He was defending his world title again. And they put me on the semi-main event, and I knocked that guy in the eighth round or seventh round. And uh, I said, Jorge Paz, you're a coward if you don't fight me again. So <laughs> we fought again. And we fought again July 8th. And that fight was a draw. And uh, that fight was uh, it was more difficult because I said, Jorge Paz, you're a coward if you won't fight me. So I called him out on national television, and he was going to try to take it to me. But uh, I took it to him. I got, I got two cuts here. Uh, one cut here, one cut here, one here. So I had five cuts. That was a bloody mess. But uh, they, 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 they didn't raise his hand. They said it was a tie. Huh, a tie. So guess who gets to keep the title? He got to keep the title. So then the following year, I kept fighting. I had a couple of fights and maybe one fight between that. that I guess there was a couple. Anyways, uh, Jorge Paz vacated the title. And in June, June 3rd, 1991, I was able to fight for the uh, IBF world title. That right over there. Yeah. Yes, sir. So he vacated the title. I fought the number two guy. I'm not the guy. Two minutes and 37 seconds in the first round. So uh, I was able to reach my goal to win, be the first person to win a world title in kickboxing or karate. And then one also win in boxing. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was an amazing thing. That was the... That was the the uh, the probably the the top of my the peak of my career right right there when I won the World Title in boxing nice and it was really really nice nice yes, nice sir. nice nice I, I love it. I always laugh about athletes right one thing that athletes always remember right we remember times dates oh yes, places sir. records yeah right no matter how old or how foggy our, our mind gets yeah. we, we're gonna remember that play we're gonna remember that city we're gonna remember that team right. we're gonna remember the temperature outside yes, where we were at right so you can you can hear all I those talk things to my wife. when i talked to my wife she says guy you remember so much kendra when she was three and a half years old and i had to get a picture with my belt i won the ibf world title that made me the first person that ever won a world title in boxing and kickboxing hold them at the same time. June 3rd, 1991. And I'm holding the belt, reach around, put my arm around her to hold the belt. And she looks at me and she said, Daddy, I can hold it.